In this video, we're going to take a look at number three from the 2015 AP Chemistry uh, test. And here it says we have potassium sorbate, uh, KC6H7O2, with a molar mass of 150 grams per mole, and it's commonly added to diet soft drinks as a preservative. A stock solution of potassium sorbate uh, of known concentration must be prepared. A student titrates 45 milliliters of the stock solution with 1.25 molar HCl. Uh, using both an indicator and a pH meter. The Ka value for sorbic acid is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So here they say write the net ionic equation between KC6H7O2 and HCl. Okay, so we have KC6H7O2 plus HCl and we're going to get uh, KCl plus H6C6H7O2. And this sorbate is just a complicated polyatomic ion. This is aqueous, 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 and aqueous. So you might say no reaction because that is your regular chemistry self talking. But here's what we have going on here. We have K plus plus C6H7O2 plus HCl. HCl is an acid, but it's a strong acid, so that does mean it's best represented broken apart. And then we get KCl, so K plus plus Cl minus. And what's a little bit tricky here is HC6H7O2 is not going to be broken apart because it's a weak acid. So now what I can do is I can cancel what cancels, and I'm going to be left with C6H7O2, and I forgot the minus one charge there, so that's my bad, plus H plus goes to HC6H7O2, and these guys are all aqueous, but I don't think you'd get counted off if you didn't include states of matter. Okay, so that is question A. In question B, it says a total of 29.95 milliliters of 1.25 molar HCl is required to reach the equivalence point. Calculate the concentration of potassium sorbate in the stock solution. So the stock solution was 45 milliliters. So hopefully an equation comes to mind, and that equation is MAVA equals MBVB. And on the AP test, they don't like you to use this equation, but there's a way that you can get rid of um, or that you can kind of trick them to get the points is that if you say moles of acid equal moles of base, okay? If you say that, then AP cannot take off on uh, your test. But if you don't include that, you're going to risk not getting any points even though you'll have the right answer. So... The molarity of the acid is 1.25 molar. The volume of the uh, acid that we used was 29.95 milliliters. The molarity of the base, the potassium sorbate, is unknown. Um, but the volume of the base, they told us, was 45 milliliters. So I'll divide each side by 45, and MB is going to end up being 0.832 molar. Okay, question C. The pH at the equivalence point of the titration is measured to be 2.54. Which of the following indicators would be the best choice for determining the endpoint of the titration? Justify your answer. So if you remember, the pKa of an indicator tells you the pH uh, for when the indicator changes color. So if the pH at the equivalence point is 2.54, we want an indicator that's going to change color around 2.54. So um, thymol blue is clearly the right choice here, but we've got to be able to justify it. So chances are on this one that you say thymol blue and that you don't get any points because you need to justify. So I'm going to say thymol blue would be the most appropriate choice because the pKa of thymol blue, which is 2.0, is close 
to the pH of the equivalence point appropriate indicators have a pKa which is going to be plus or minus one chances are you're not going to get it exact uh, to the pH at the equivalence point so um, color change happens at the right time Okay, so now question D says calculate the pH at the half equivalence point. Um, what did they give me? They gave me Ka, so I was I was looking for that because I didn't want to have to do complicated math, and this math is a lot easier. So I would just say that the pH at the half equivalence point is equal to pKa of the acid and there's a lot of reasons why that's because your acid and conjugate base have equal concentrations so using the Henderson Hasselbach equation um, the log of the numerator and de denominator that fraction ends up being 1 so the log of 1 ends up being 0 but I would just say pH equals pK uh, the pH equals the minus log of the Ka and so the Ka that they gave us was 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. So we're going to get a 4 point something for the pH, and we get 4.76. Okay, part E. We're almost done with this one. It says the initial pH and the equivalence point are plotted on the graph below. Accurately scratch, sketch the titration curve on the graph. Mark the position of the half equivalence point with an X. So... If about 30 milliliters is our equivalence point, then our half equivalence point is like 15-ish milliliters. I understand it's a little less, it's 14 point something, but for all intents and purposes. And at that half equivalence point, we just solved for the pH, and the pH was uh, 4.76. So I'm going to go up here and get 4.76 and put an X right about there. And then what I don't want to do is... The titration curve looks like this overall, but I want to understand that the only part that we're looking at is, and maybe I can make this a little bit better. The only part that we see on this graph is here, here, and here. So my shape might not look as I might expect it. Okay, so I'm going to get connect those and then I'm going to connect those and if this kept going you get a normal looking titration curve okay so now last part is going to be part F let's see what that is asking the pH of the soft drink is 3.37 after the addition of potassium sorbate which species HC6H7O2 or C6H7O2 has a higher concentration so, and we need to justify our uh, answer. So hopefully you recognize this as a common ion question, and common ions are just a buffer question. So hopefully you're thinking, let's use the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Okay, and I'm going to move down to some lines. Okay, so pH equals pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. And A minus in this situation is going to be C6H7O2 minus 1. And then HA is going to be the same species, but just with the H plus attached. So H C6 H7 O2. And what I know is I just want to solve for this fraction. If the fraction is greater than 1, then I know that my numerator is really big. And therefore, C6H7O2 minus 1 would be the species in greater concentration. And if my fraction is less than 1, then I know that my acid is um, in greater concentration. And um, what we can do is say that our pH is 3.37. So you could also justify it another way. Um, we know that our pKa is 
going to be negative log of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5, which is 4.76. So I'm going to minus 4.76, minus 4.76, and I'm going to get negative 1.39 equals the log of C6H7O2 minus 1 divided by HC6H7O2. Inverse of log is 10 to whatever's on the other side, so 10 to the minus 1.39 equals this fraction, C6H7O2 minus 1 over HC6H7O2. And that equals 0 0.0407. So HC6H7O2, which is my denominator, must be larger. Another great way that involves a little bit less math is just by saying, since the pH is less than the pKa, and the pKa represents when my conjugate base and acid are in equal concentration, since my pH is less than that at 3.37, uh, we must have more of the acid um, in our solution.